Hi, I'm Susan, this is Hayley, and welcome back to Cancer Research Demystified. On this episode, we're going to tell you all about our latest research paper. So let's start off at the beginning. What do you mean by research paper? <laughs> okay, so this is one of the key things actually about research is that after we do a set of experiments and we kind of find out the answer to a question, as scientists, we write up a paper about it. So it's sort of like a long essay. It'll have a few figures, some data, some graphs, and then we will publish it in a journal. So a journal is sort of like a professional version of a magazine. Um, you might have heard of some of the more famous ones. So there's the New England Journal of Medicine. Lancet. The Lancet, yeah. yeah. Science, nature, oh, things yeah. like that. Um, they're the fancy ones. <laughs> So what happens is you submit it there, and they don't just publish it as is. What they actually do is they take your paper and send it out to a bunch of your peers. So these are people who are an expert in the same field as you. They'll review it, they'll look through it, they'll check if you've done your experiments right, if you've analysed that data right, um, and even kind of how you've written it, have you drawn the right conclusions, are you exaggerating how important the data is, uh, all things like that. And they'll feed that information back to the journal, we'll do a little back and forth. Once everybody's happy, then it gets published and the rest of the whole scientific community can all have a look at it. And these days, increasingly, these are available to the public as well. Yeah. So open access is what we call it. The yeah. So a lot of universities and the big funding bodies for research are insisting that research should be open access now. So hopefully, if you want to look at these kind of papers, a lot of them you actually can now, even if you are not associated with the university or hospital. Okay, so this new paper, tell me about it. Okay, so the reason I'm telling you about this paper is it's sort of mine. So how it works with um, the kind of authors behind a paper is that the person whose name is at the beginning of the paper, which in this case is me, is the one who wrote it up and usually did kind of most of the work. But using this paper as an example, there's actually 23 authors on here, including Hayley Pye. Um, <laughs> how it works usually is kind of the closer you are to the beginning, the more involved you were in the lab, doing the petting, like analysing the data. And then the people towards the end are the people who usually were involved in overseeing the work, supervising it, so that's kind of, kind of the more senior people. And the very last name is the person who's like the kind of boss on the project, so in this case it's our boss, Hayley Whittaker. And we have a video about her, interviewing her, yeah. what she's up to, what her interests are, so that's on the channel, check it out. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless plug. So the day-to-day -day of this project is a little bit gruesome, I suppose. Um, I do collect the prostates from the theatre in my hand, they're still nice and warm. I would take them to the lab and slice little sections out of them, um, and this was how I spent my life for the first kind of year, year and a half that I was in this lab. Um, also, I mentioned to you that when uh, Haley's on holiday I have to do her job for Innovate, but when I'm on holiday she has to slice my prostates. So, you know, <laughs> What goes around <laughs> comes around. I have to pet her urine. She has to slice her prostate. So this particular paper is about a project called People or Patient Samples for Wait Patient Prostate Samples for Research. It's a great acronym. We'll have it along the way. <laughs> um, so this is a project we've been running for a few years actually, and it's all about ways to better collect samples from prostate cancer patients for researchers. So the way this has been done in the past uh, by researchers all over the world is when a patient's prostate is removed because of cancer, they kind of take little samples somewhat randomly from the tissue, so like little chunks of tissue. Only if the patient consents. Only if the patient right. consents and agrees to be part of a specific research study or trial. Um, but they, they take them sort of randomly, the actual samples and then researchers later figure out, well, okay, this sample looks like it was part of the tumour, or this sample looks like actually it was part of the healthy prostate near the tumour or far away from the tumour. And we can do really good research with that. But what would be really useful to us is if we knew in advance that they were specific areas of the prostate and specific parts of the tumour that we want to look at. It means we're not going to waste tissue either, right? Yeah, we don't really want to collect like 23 samples when we only needed two. So this project was using MRI and biopsy data. So patients, before they go for their surgery to remove their prostate, they get a scan in an MRI machine, and then researchers like us, or in this case, exactly us, <laughs> have a look at the MRI, 
and decide whereabouts in the prostate we want to take those samples. Um, so we did this on a couple of hundred patients and then to check that it was really working we picked apart the data, went through it all in detail and that's what this paper is about, kind of proving does it work. Yeah. So this is the first few tables that we put in the paper. So these are describing things like the patient cohort, so what kinds of cancers they have and how advanced the disease was, where they got their MRIs done, because we're looking at a few different MRI machines. This is useful if people want to use our method to collect their own samples, then they can compare how similar their patients are to ours. So this figure explains the process of how we collected our samples. So we describe the way that we use the MRI to predict where the tumour is, how we take the samples and where, and what kind of different experiments that we can do downstream. So this is useful for researchers working in the same field who want to use our method to collect their own samples in the future. So this figure has lots of graphs, so this is similar to the kind of figures that you would see in a lot of different types of papers. Um, these graphs are showing kind of some of the key data from this project. So they're showing how effective the method was at successfully targeting the tumour, so it was pretty good in this case. Uh, it's also comparing things like whether MRI or biopsy was better at telling us where the tumour was, and from this data we reckon it's MRI. It also shows us things like how much the prostate shrank after surgery, which is important for us figuring out how best to use that MRI data. So this figure is a panel of images of tissue that we've stained in the lab, and this shows us that we were able to keep that tissue alive for a few days after the surgery. This is really, really useful for researchers who want to look at new drugs or different kinds of tests uh, because it's important that the tissue is high enough quality that we can keep it alive in the lab. So it means that using this method, you know, we still produce high quality tissue and it's quite um, useful for researchers. So that will kind of reassure anyone who's reading our paper and saying, oh, your new method is scary. <laughs> but it should still work. So if you want to know more about how we stain and take pictures of these kinds of tissues, we actually have another video about that that we'll link in the description. Okay, so this paper is now out in the world. Other researchers yeah. can see it, they can build on it, they can develop it into their own methods and use it in their own lab. But what are you going to do? What's next for you? Okay, so in the paper we showed that one of the things that we did was keep the tissue alive in the lab, and that's actually what I'm working on at the moment. So these papers do come out usually a little while after you've kind of finished the project, so I've actually had a good few months to work on the next thing already. Um, and I'm actually testing new types of drugs for prostate cancer on this tissue, so that's pretty cool. We've shown you in other videos that we use cell lines to, to look at drugs and tests, but actually using real patient tissue is really, really valuable for us as researchers. Um, and it's been pretty fun, we're getting some interesting data so far. Yeah, so hopefully we can um, tell you more about that if you're interested, or you know, once that paper's out, we can discuss that with you guys as well. It might be a little wet. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching. If you have any comments on any of this, or anything you want to hear more about, a bit more in detail, just let us know in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.